everyone! So this is the brand new book from Hannah Lynn. It's called Whimsy Girls Through the Decades and I've been seeing little sneak peeks and previews on Hannah's social medias for the last few months and I've been so excited to see the finished product because it looks like so much fun. Just looking back across the different decades, uh, the fashion, you know, the accessories, the fads and the trends. So I've been really excited to see the finished product. So it is an Amazon Create Space printed book, very, very standard book, um, glossy card cover. You know what Amazon books are like. Um, so if I go to the front of the book, as usual, we have a contents page featuring thumbnails of every single girl within the book and their names as well. So, for example, we've got Prairie Harvest. We've got Lucinda. We've got Beach Picnic, Workout Wendy and uh, Grunge Girl. So you can go through them all and they all have their own name. So we're starting off quite early in history. You can see the prairie harvest here. Um, in the background, there is a lot of detail going on. And that's the thing about this particular book and some of the other books from Hannah Lynn. If you want all of this detail, you've got it. But if you don't, if you want something that's a little bit simpler to colour, uh, a little bit larger in scale and without so much detail, you have exactly the same image but cropped and zoomed in with some of the detail taken out. So every single image throughout this book has this, um, this second image which is exactly the same but just with less detail. So it's up to you whether you want something large to practice the skin tone on maybe or whether you want something heavily detailed with a lot of background stuff going on. It's up to you. So we've got Prairie Harvest. We've got this one here with the beautiful rolling fields in the background. Almost reminds me of a Jane Austen book. Um, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Beautiful dress and hairstyle. And then the next one, as you can see, it's been zoomed in for you to have a little less to do. So this one looks quite Victorian, but you know me and my time periods, I'm probably wrong. Uh, we've got the pinwheel hair, again, massive flouncy dress and all of the flourishes on the curtains um, and a little gramophone as well. So I'm thinking I'm in the right sort of era there. And again, we've zoomed in and we've got that um, much larger scale image. I am going to show you each and every one as it's larger scale so that you can see what detail has been removed. This one's really sweet. So I'm not really sure what era this could be from. We've got what looks like an early motor car. So maybe the 1920s. Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> when did motor cars come out? This is basic history. Um, yeah, but again, really, really nice background with the sea and uh, or it could even be a lake, I guess. Um, yeah. And then the next one, as you can see, is zoomed in. So this I know for sure is 20s, 30s flapper girl. I just recognise the, the aesthetic of it. You can see she's got really, really short hair, the headband with the feathers, loads of jewellery, the skirt with the tassels on the bottom and the feather boa. And then we've got some Art Deco-esque framing in the background. And then there she is without all of that framing. So, you know, if you didn't want to take your time doing every single bit of that, you have got a clear image there. This one could be from any time period, really. I know she's wearing a few little frills and things that you might not see nowadays, but, you know, it could be from today, really. We've got a cow in the background. She's obviously working the farm. There's a barn um, and she's putting the washing out there. She's probably just done it here with the mangle. So maybe that gives you a little bit of an, a time period there. Um, let's just check what this one's called. It's called washing day, so we don't really have any clue there. But again, with the mangle, it could be anywhere in the 40s, 50s, couldn't it? And there is our zoomed in image. So this one, that's going to be the war girl one, or warbird Rosie. So she's either a land girl in the war or she's some sort of mechanic. You can see she's holding the spanner. She's got the spitfire in the background. She could be an Amelia Earhart style figure. Totally up to you how you want to construe it. Um, and she looks very much like the you can do it um, girl that you see on all of the posters. So her next image is is taking the spitfire out so you've just got her in her position so this one i'm just going to keep checking this is baseball betty so we've got a female baseball player what more can you say again really really nice background with the stars and the diamond uh, baseball isn't really a, a huge game over here we have something similar called rounders that you play at school in physical education but baseball is not really massive over here but Yep, so some of the detail has been taken out. It's cropped in a little bit more. I think you're getting the gist now of how it works. This girl is called Lucinda. 
and she looks like she would be singing in a cabaret bar very slinky dress you know kind of wrapped around the microphone and uh, the sultry eyes going on and then it's just taken the curtain out for you on the next one so this looks like the proper Stepford housewife type figure doesn't it called dinner is served so you can see she's got her apron on her pinny um, the oven gloves and she's serving up a nice roast dinner and if we just flick yeah it's just a zoomed in one so some of them do keep the detail but we just have more of a focused in cropped image so this is a movie starlet or a Hollywood icon, kind of Marilyn Monroe-ish. You can see she's got the perfect hourglass figure um, and then all the film rolls and things in the background and of course the red carpet. She's called the Golden Age of Hollywood. So yeah, any, anything like those wonderful, beautiful um, figures that you would see in the old Hollywood eras. Now I love this one, um, this is one I was going to actually do for this review but I have coloured something very very similar of Hannah Lynn's before and I just wanted to try something a bit different so really really love this image. In fact as I'm looking at this I'm sure that the one I coloured she had a little poodle on her skirt as well so I'm thinking maybe it's the same girl and obviously it's 50s, it's Greece, it's that kind of era. We've got the jukebox and the records, the diner and there we are. So this must be the beach one, beach picnic. So again, it really could be from any era, but I think the swimsuit and the hairstyle gives it away. Uh, again, it looks quite 50s and you know, it just you can imagine this in full color, can't you? A beautiful, glorious beach day. So here we've got a secretary. Um, the massive beehive is telling me we're moving into the 60s now. We've got wood paneling on the walls and let's see what her name is. Front desk Donna. So she's at the front desk and then we've taken away all of the detail from the wood panelling there. So we're moving into the 70s already and this is disco fever, isn't it? We've got the glittering ball behind her and, you know, that funny, wacky 70s fashion. Uh, let's see what she's called. Disco Diana. So she's got the afro. She's got the massive eyelashes. But again, all of Hannah Lynn's characters have massive eyelashes. So that doesn't give us any clue. And then some of the detail removed. So we're back in the 60s for peace and love. We've got the VW camper in the background and all of the paisley and, and the fun stuff going on there. We've got the bell-bottom jeans and yeah, taken away, we've just got her and her camper van in the background. Now this one's looking very 80s. We've got the um, off the shoulder top, the beads, the chains, the frizzy curly crimped hair and yeah, just very, very 80s fashion there. Loving the triangular earrings as well. That's a nice touch. And staying with the 80s, moving kind of into the 90s as well. Um, again, crimped hair, boombox on the shoulder, bomber jacket. Isn't it funny how things change when you look back at the Prairie Harvest Girl that we started off with? So again, for 80s, we've got the aerobics class. We've got the fitness instructor. You can see she's got her leg and arm warmers there. Again, the off-the-shoulder top. And yeah, super 80s. So we're still in the 80s, of course, with the massive perm. I think all of you who grew up in this era will remember the amount of hairspray that you had to use to keep your perms in check. Uh, yeah, so I don't think you could do a book about the decades that include the 80s without some sort of huge poodle perm going on. And as you can see, we've got a bit of a cropped image there. So this is the one that I coloured, as you can see. Now, just ignore all of this because I do tend to use um, the back of the previous page as a palette sometimes, so just don't look at that. Uh, but I chose this one because it was most symbolic of how I grew up and my fashion style. Now, I have made a few changes to the original design. If I just go to the next page, you will see that she's wearing um, a vest top that says metal on it. And you can't quite see this, but on the, on the previous one, she was wearing fishnet tights with cut off shorts. And that is just not something that I would ever wear. So what I thought I would do is I was I would try and make it as close to teenage me as possible. And that's what I've done here. So this is basically what I look like throughout the early 2000s in my teenage years. So there are a couple of things that I couldn't change. For example, uh, the hat. I never wore a hat, but I couldn't really get rid of it on this particular image. So I've just sort of incorporated it into the design and made it a little bit smaller. Um, I would usually be wearing a big baggy Blink 182 hoodie. But again, I couldn't really see a way to convert um, the jacket that Hannah had put on here into a hoodie without it looking like the arms were in a weird position. 
so I give myself a Blink 182 t-shirt instead. I did wear t-shirts like this all the time, so yeah. Um, and I decided to make the jacket tartan because I had a pair of tartan Converse shoes that I used to wear with this get up. So never had a tartan jacket, but I did have tartan Converse. And I think the biggest change I've made to this is the trousers so I wore massive massive baggy trousers you know some of them a pair that I had they cost 50 pounds at the time which was a lot of money for one pair of trousers but I begged and begged for them they were jeans that were absolutely massive the flare was literally bigger than I can show you on camera uh, you probably could have made two skirts out of one of the flares that's how big they were they had pockets in them in the actual flare bit they were amazing basically <laughs> but yeah so i'm really really happy with how this has turned out it really does look like me as i looked as a teen um i used posca pens by the way to sort of change the design and, and go over lines and things that i didn't want but yeah so really really happy and i really like the way the cds came out as well i know that helen elliston has a cd tutorial in one of her colorist special effects books i'm not sure which one it is i didn't use it for this and i'll tell you for why i couldn't be bothered to get up off the settee and get the book off the shelf that is my, the extent of my laziness um so basically i just did um did what i thought a cd would look like but there you go if you do want a tutorial i suppose i could do one for you but helen elliston already has one i don't know how different it is to this i'd have to have a look so there you go so this is clearly inspired by clueless you can see she's got the preppy thing going on the headband the straight hair the mobile phone the little short skirt and the thigh high socks holding on to her books so yeah that's the uh, that's the feel that i get from this one the school in the background um so every, everybody will know that movie won't they so this is obviously quite 90s, this one. You can see the graffiti in the background on the brick wall. We've got the big baggy dungarees, the chains, the bling. Uh, yeah, so another really fun one to colour. It'd be great to have a lot of colour on that, you can imagine it. So this one, I'm not entirely sure. This could be from nowadays. I'm not up with the fashion at the moment. Uh, it's called Trendy Tracy. Wearing short shorts, vest top, in front of the palm trees, the beach... Um, yeah, it could be from any time between the 2000s and now, couldn't it, really? And then I think the final one here is called Cozy Morning Coffee. And yeah, that must be nowadays because that's kind of how I look uh, every single day with my hair piled on top of my head. A little bit less elegantly than this, more mistrunchable than this, to be honest. Um, in front of the laptop with the kitty cat. And yeah, really cute, cozy, fun scene. So that's the end of the book. As you can agree, there's some really, really fun images to go through here. I think anybody who, you know, likes Hannah Lynn's style will love this book because it will appeal to a lot of people. You know, we all know the different styles through the decades, you know, the ones that speak personally to us and when we were growing up. So, yeah, fantastic book from Hannah Lynn, as always. I'll be leaving the link in the description for you to go ahead and buy this on Amazon prices vary so i'll just let you have a look how much it is in your country right now if you have any questions about the book please let me know i'll try my best to answer do let me know in the comments what you think of it and don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon on color with claire